the third president, Thomas Jefferson. Research on Jefferson's why has already given us one huge surprise. It had long been suspected that Jefferson fathered children by his slave, Sally Hemings. A 1998 study used the Y chromosome to prove that it was almost certainly true. It showed that this white man apparently had black descendants. Now, Wells believes he's discovered something about Jefferson that no one suspected. A discovery not about his descendants, but about his ancestors. And it could take us a big step toward Adam. Wells noticed that Jefferson's Y chromosome mutations don't look European. So where did Jefferson's ancestors come from? To find out the truth, Wells needs another DNA sample. The trail leads to rural Virginia. One of the closest living relatives of the founding father lives in Freeze, Virginia. Now, do you have any any sense of, of your own ancestry and who you're descended from? Uh, Thomas Jefferson. Thomas Jefferson. How many? Odin Jefferson there? shares the founding father's last name. Yeah. He also inherited his Y chromosome. It's not going to hurt, and you rub it on the inside of your cheek. Really scrape away up and down. Everything about Jefferson points to him being European. Genealogists have traced his ancestry back to medieval France and Britain. But the test reveals something you might never have imagined. Jefferson's Y chromosome links him not to Europe, but to the Middle East, what is now Lebanon and Syria. This is the best guess. A direct ancestor who lived in a land that no longer exists, called Phoenicia. The Bible calls it Canaan. Jefferson may look European, but his Y chromosome tells a different story. It shows that what we look like may not really tell us where we come from. And it raises a question mark over the traditional image of Adam. For centuries, artists have depicted him like this, like a European. For many of us, this is Adam. Michelangelo's famous painting in the Vatican Sistine Chapel. He looks like a beautiful Italian who spends a lot of time in the gym. Did the common ancestor of all men really look like this? The story of Jefferson suggests he could have looked very different. But Jefferson can lead us much further back than his Phoenician ancestor. Jefferson has a particular mutation that he shares with men from many different countries. With the same techniques used on Genghis Khan, Wells can link this mutation to another critical common ancestor. He's known as M9. He lived around 40,000 years ago. Wells' research suggests this one man could be the forefather of half of all men alive getting closer to Adam. But Wells knows there are some men who do not have the M9 mutation. To identify the common ancestor of all men, he must take us deeper down the tree. But where does he go next? There are clues from beyond the world of genetics. It's evidence you can touch. Evidence from bones. Before the powerful new tools of DNA, our picture of humanity's past came almost entirely from fossils. But that picture is incomplete. The oldest human fossils come from Africa, dating back millions of years. But ancient remains have been found at other sites far away. The Middle East has produced early human fossils and pre-human remains have been found in Asia. Fossil evidence points to three regions that could be the birthplace of humankind. Asia, the Middle East, and Africa. Can DNA resolve which one gave birth to scientific atom? 
Wells wants to find a place where people from all three regions intersect. A study of historical trading routes offers a likely candidate. Off the coast of Kenya, the tiny island of Pate. A mysterious place with clues that seem out of place in Africa. Curious ruins. It's the main mosque. It was painted black. I still see it. Monuments that might be Islamic. Tombs that look almost Chinese. Even the faces suggest an intriguing mix. Some have the lighter skin tone of Europeans. Some could be Arabs. Others have eyes that look Asian. For centuries, traders have come here from all over the old world. From Europe, the Middle East, maybe even from China. Jumbo. 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 <laughs> Jumbo. <laughs> History has created a genetic melting pot. And by taking a sample of your DNA, of your genes, we can say something about the people you're related to in the past, your ancestors. If the Y chromosomes here lead to a common ancestor for all these ethnic groups, they could lead us to Adam. If you could open your mouth. Wells takes samples from 25 local men. Right. Thank you. Okay. You could open your mouth. Where was your mother born? See you. DNA analysis proves there are men on Pate from all over the place. Great, thank you. With ancestors from Africa, Europe, Arabia, India, and the Fertile Crescent of the Middle East. There is more genetic variation on this tiny island of Pate than in many countries. And the samples show something critical. They point to a new super ancestor. Even though the Y chromosomes come from all over the world, they almost all have something in common. A particular mutation that scientists call M168. In fact, men all over the planet share this mutation. Genghis Khan and the San Francisco Mongolians have it. Thomas Jefferson has it. Wells himself has it. Nearly three billion men share this mutation. And it means they're all descended from one man. It's a staggering thought. Genghis Khan could have fathered millions. But the man who first had this genetic mutation had billions of descendants. We're near the bottom of the tree. Could this man, M168, be Adam? There's only one problem. On the Kenyan island of Pate, Spencer Wells found one man who doesn't fit. His Y chromosome doesn't have the critical mutation. It's a crucial clue. And he's not the only one. There are others who are not descended from M168. So he can't be Adam. M168 is far down the tree, but not its base. And the Y chromosome from the odd man out on Pate gives us the final piece of our puzzle. The man's lineage originates in East or South Africa. Comparing this Y chromosome to thousands of men from all over the world reveals a critical discovery.